tonight are two public hearings. The first one is on the general obligation bond issuance for the Citizens National Bank building, and the second one has to do with the budget amendment with regard to the same. Mr. Throy, if you'll introduce uh, the first item. Yes, Mr. Mayor, City Council. <clears throat> the City of Report is holding a public hearing on its proposal to issue without a referendum bonds of the City of Emporia, Virginia. The bonds will be issued in the principal amount of $1,733,500 and will be secured by the full faith and credit of the City. The proceeds of the bonds will be used to provide funds to the Employer Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the rehabilitation of the Citizens National Bank Building located at 401 South Main Street, which is the corner of Hicksford Avenue and South Main Street, to refinance certain existing existing tax exempt indebtedness related to the Citizens National Bank Building and pay the cost of issuing the bonds. If anyone would like to speak on the matter, uh, please uh, approach the microphone and give your name and address for the record. Uh, Bruce Campbell, 314 West York Drive, Emporia. Could Brian give us what the building is going to be used for and when they think this building would actually be under construction and maybe when the building will actually be in use? We can't get into the specific leases because they haven't been signed, still under negotiation. Uh, anticipation with regard to uh, improvements. We, an we anticipate of everything that is through tonight that construction was started in mid-December and it would last approximately 10 months. If you can't go into specifics for the leases, can you go into maybe what the businesses are, <laughs> not, not the name of the business, but type of business, and what and where the city is going to be using it for city purposes. Thank you. The city will use it for the city sheriff's office. There's also a, govern, uh, a, a governmental agency, a state governmental agency, and a rest of the city. Anyone else have a question? Mayor and city council. Jerry Allen, uh, my understanding that address, 1218 Fountain Creek Road in Fort Virginia, I understand that the building is going to be used also for a restaurant. Is that true? That's what I just said, yes, sir. You did say I restaurant? I just said that, yes. Any other comments? Good evening. Uh, I'm Wilson Clary, uh, 405 Laurel Street. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to commend the city council, mayor, and uh, city manager, and assistant city manager, and all the staff that's been involved in, in, in the beautification of Emporia and doing quite a number of projects, the Halifax Street project, the Main Street project, the school. I'm thinking about West Atlantic Street, a lot of things that I believe it have enhanced Emporia and just, just uh, uh, hopefully a beginning step uh, in doing that. Um, I think they've all served a very good purpose. Uh, but um, I'm here to speak out in opposition of the city uh, uh, moving, in, moving ahead with the project that, that we're here tonight about the general obligation bond issue of one point, almost $1.8 million. Um, <clears throat> It seems to me that that money actually could be spent a lot better spread out through the whole city instead of just spent on one corner. I think that I think the, the, the money could be allocated like it's been done, which you've recently done, would be, a, a, in my mind, a better, a better way of doing it. Um, in effect, the city is becoming uh, a developer, a commercial developer in downtown Emporia, um, for the most part. And with the with the advent of a restaurant, and I just frankly think that's a bad move to make. Uh, uh, one can look at the city of Richmond and see the Sixth Street Marketplace and what a disaster it was. Um, to me, if it was such a great idea, why hadn't a business person gone in and renovated the building and put a, you know, uh, purchased it and made it a commercial venture that was that was um, uh, made good dollars and cents. 
But uh, uh, just to reiterate, I'd like to really like to commend the city council for what they're doing. I just I just think that this project is a little bit too much to bite off for what it might bring to the city. And I understand the need for city offices. I'm all for that piece of it. But I'd like to see if, it does, if we're going to do something like that, do it in a way that maybe is more fiscally, um, fisc less cost in a fiscal way. <laughs> say that. One other thing I'd like to mention with respect to what's coming down the pipe is in a f not too distant future with the tax reform, with the, uh, with the uh, health care reform that's going on, I'm sure you're aware that a lot of, a lot of money is going to be required of the state to pay for Medicaid Medicaid payments are going to be in. Mr. Sir, we need to stay focused with regard to this specific project. This is regarding that project, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'll give you a little bit. Okay, <coughs> well, where I'm going with this is, this is my personal opinion, the things I've read, that the Medicaid costs are going to really burden the states uh, to provide that cost for care. And I'm concerned that it's going to be pulling money from the state is going to be pulling money out of the localities for schools in the future and it just puts more of a fiscal responsibility on the local governments and if this project doesn't work very well that's just going to be a fiscal you know be a, perhaps a fiscal drag on the city thank you thank you anyone else um, my name is Tony Vincent uh, I'm a co-owner of Vinco Enterprises. Um, we derive a large portion of our income. Mr. Vincent, your address. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 100 Beach Tree Lane. Sorry. Uh, we derive a large portion of our income through commercial leases, one of which is the 6th District Court Services Unit. Uh, large full-service leases such as this are hard to come by, especially in an economy like we're experiencing now. Losing that lease would be significant to our company's bottom line. With that said, we expect changes like this will occur from time to time, and we're equipped to handle that. My question is, why are they leaving? We bought the building in 2001, and they were the tenant then. I think they'd been there 10 or so years before that. Uh, <coughs> after 12 years with our company, why now? In 2009, our, we approached the city with a rent increase based on market rates. And, uh, and the city negotiated it down, uh, citing budgetary shortages, which we accepted. And also, with the request of Mr. Harris, we uh, offered more space, which, by the way, is still available. That was denied, again, because of budgetary shortages. So how can the city now afford to sink $2 million, roughly, into an old, rundown, out-of-date building to create space for the 6th District? when it couldn't meet our lease request. The economy certainly hasn't gotten any better for us in the last two years. I would understand if the city just simply wanted to move the court services in-house to save the taxpayers the rent expense it's paying to us. But I hardly think a $2 million renovation would, will result in, the saving, in saving the employer taxpayer. We would be more than willing to repair, renovate, beautify, and expand this existing space. That was our intention in 2009, following the signing of a multi-year lease. That lease never was executed, nor was a list of repairs or renovations ever presented. We now are on a month-to-month -month lease basis. But the larger point I want to make here tonight is that the city government shouldn't enter into real estate, into the real estate leasing business or any other business that competes with the taxpayers. It's not fair, and we can't issue bonds to raise capital. It's not a fair fight, and it's not right, and it shouldn't be allowed. I understand a restaurant will inhabit the bottom part of the restaurant, the bottom part of the building. When the restaurant leaves, and in my opinion it will, the city will have to seek out renters for that space, and that again will compete with my business, and that is not a position I want our city government to be in. In the past, the city has purchased properties to deal with public hazards, like the Bloom Building and the elementary school. I don't believe the bank building is a hazard and probably shouldn't have been purchased in the first place. But to continue on and invest another with roughly $1.2 million after grants in a business as risky as the restaurant business in order to retire the debt is ill-advised and should not be allowed. The money we receive from the city for that space 
is a full service lease. That means we pay the power and the water bills. Roughly a quarter of that rent goes to the power and water. The savings for the city budget comes down to less than $20,000. Is it really necessary for the city to undertake such an expensive development to save twenty grand a year with the debt service retirement resting on the risky restaurant venture? I certainly don't think so, and I hope our representative doesn't think so either. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else? Deborah Brown, 604 Temple Avenue, Emporia, Virginia. <clears throat> I stand in disagreement, too. Um, I never thought we should have purchased that bank. And to put a restaurant there on the corner, where are you going to park? You have a problem already with parking space, and you have already have a restaurant down there. So why you want to put another restaurant right under the one that you have to probably deter business from there. And I think I have come before you before about people spending money, investing money in this community, and then we bring someone else in to compete and end up running somebody else out of business. I think we should consider the citizens in this community, the money that they have invested, and try to support them in their business as well in their ventures. Why not expand on this building if you need some more office space? And I think the money that you will pour into that bank, and I agree, you probably could save if you invest in this building. Thank you. Thank you, Anyone else? <laughs> <coughs> Anyone else would like to speak on this particular item? <coughs> if not, I hereby declare the public hearing number one concluded. Uh, item number two. Yes, Honorable Mayor and City Council. <clears throat> the City of Emporia is holding a public hearing on its intention to appropriate the sum of $1,733,500 in bond proceeds into its FY13 operating budget. The proceeds of the bonds will be used to provide funds to the Emporia Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the rehabilitation of the Citizens National Bank building located at 401 South Main Street, refinance certain existing tax exempt indebtedness related to the Citizens National Bank building, and pay the cost of issuing the bonds. Is there anyone who would like to speak with her in regard to this item? My name is Rory Moore. I live at 2785 Quarry Road Skippers. My question to you is, if you're talking about issuing bonds, what is that going to cost the taxpayer? Are you talking about the specific cost of the issuance? Yeah, well, not only that, but aren't you going to have to pay interest on these bonds? Certainly, yes. What is that going to cost the taxpayers? 3.86%. 3 3.86%. And how often are we paying that interest? Pay it every day. For how long? Uh, it's uh, a 20-year note. A 20-year note? What happens if you don't have the income from the general revenue to pay these interest payments it's to the bondholders? Which means that you will go up on our taxes to That's make correct. these payments. That's correct. But you're also basically entering into a commercial business and you're asking the taxpayers to pay for it, basically. We are entering into the uh, renovation of a building which will house commercial right. business. But is, isn't it my understanding that there are several concessions given to the tenant that's going to handle the restaurant downstairs? Uh, that is under negotiation at this point in time. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else like to speak on this matter? If not, I hereby declare that public hearing closed as well. Uh, Mr. Saunders, uh, we'll begin our general meeting. Uh, opening prayer. I'd like to call on Mr.